So today we're going to talk about big mistake number three, churches who treat their artists like they're some feather in their cap or a cog in their machine. The expression of feather in somebody's cap, it's a hunting term and it's, it's based on like a trophy. Somebody has been out hunting and they're, they're victorious in the scoring game animal or something and now they're wearing it. To proudly display a popular artist or performer who attends your church instead of who is this person on the inside and Lord show me what this person needs the most in their life right now through our fellowship together. And treating somebody like they're just a cog in a machine is just as bad. It's treating somebody like they're a means to an end, getting all you can out of them. That's when you tell an artist, oh, you have this special thing inside of you. All you have to do is create it for me. I'm not saying that artists shouldn't serve, but when there's no thought to the relationship or their process or their needs, or whether an artist even understands the value of the project you're asking them to do, you're treating them like a thing, not a person. Treating people either way like this is really more about slavery and using people than it is about setting people free into the creations that we are in Christ. We are not feathers and we're not cogs, we're vessels. And we need to be poured into before we have anything to give. So how many artists have you lost because they felt like they were pouring and pouring out without being filled up or refilled? They didn't get to taste and see that the Lord is good. So don't make that mistake. First, fill the artists up. Make sure that you are providing for their spiritual and artistic needs. There does have to be prayer support and encouragement and just knowing that they are loved and that they matter as a person. After an artist has found the peace that they are looking for and has been filled and nurtured spiritually, then they're going to want a place to pour out the beauty that is inside of them. And they're going to want to express and return those expressions of love for the body of Christ because God is growing them in discipleship from the inside. Artists can lead in community, and it is a beautiful and joyful thing. How artists gather is much more important than anything that they create or can do for you. If they're being led by a person who's just kind of a shallow cheerleader, or a taskmonger, or a guilt wrangler, or a bulldozer, forget it. You're not going to have any creative people to even lead because they're not going to tolerate that. They're going to split. And they should. If you can see an artist on the inside with the eyes of Christ, how Jesus sees that person in their language that they speak, in their chosen medium, you're in for a marvelous treat. And that doesn't mean that now you always have to include every person's chosen art form for every sermon that your church has or anything like that. No, there's times and places for different forms of art but it is really special as a new way to chew on a spiritual concept or a passage of scripture. Next, we're going to look at another big mistake that churches make, which is not knowing what to do with the artists who are there. Like, isn't that opening a huge can of worms, just letting all these artists express things? How does that work? So I'll address that in our next video. Thanks for watching.